Snowboarding has evolved into a multi-billion dollar industry with global recognition and a world tour where riders all around skills are judged and awarded on a one through six star tier level system. Including four different formats, a rider's six best results are tallied and over 10 months season, athletes compete in slope style, half pipe, big air and quarter pipe events for the world number one position. I think it's a great thing to have the TTR tour and actually have um, you know something to cap up the the winter of the contest and the results and you know the best overall rider is crowned so I think it's it's really special. I would love to win TDR uh, I'm going for it actually then I can say I'm the best in the world. That I think shows a different kind of rider and title holder when they can excel through a, di a lot of different um, you know areas of riding. It's pretty good that the TTRM, to be the champion you have to ride and pipe and slope stuff. Yeah, that's probably the best format that you can do, you know. Someone can ride slope, someone can ride rail, someone can ride tranny, then that equals overall, you know. It gives the riders an opportunity to step outside of their routine too and, and, um, and get, prob get in some other riding that they probably want to but they just don't have a lot of time to. To me, TTR is snowboarding. It's a competitive snowboarding. It's a world ranking. It's a, a legit platform for women, also for slope style, for dis disciplines that don't get the recognition they deserve. But this thing is like real. You're the best snowboarder, you know? It's for sure fun to, to look how you're placed and like, okay, maybe I can do better, I can do better. and then. I mean, look on the TTR list, like the, the whole top is, is really good. I think this is 10 girls that are really are making a difference. You know, having it be so versatile over such a long amount of time and um, also over, you know, between slope and pipe, um, it really just really allows a rider a lot of opportunities to do well during a full season. Kelly Clark, Tora Bright, Shereel Moss and Jamie Anderson all have the honor of holding the Swatch TTR World Champion title. You know, like what do you do when you win 50 grand? You gotta celebrate with all your good friends. <laughs> I remember how much money I won for winning it in my first contest. I got 300 bucks and I was thinking, dang, this is like gas money to go back and forth from SoCal to Big Bear like 10 times plus because I was in a 71 Volkswagen bug, so that was perfect. <laughs> Snowboarding in the early days was a lifestyle choice. For women, brand and industry support was minimal and prize money was virtually non-existent. I know Tara really, really closely and I have a huge amount of respect for her, but she decided she was going to be a snowboarder with no future. I mean, there was no future. No one was getting paid. And so a person like that, I have so much admiration for. Like, they're such a pioneer. Like, we're so spoiled now. We're getting invited to events. We have free accommodations. We've got, you know, our free lodging or our sponsors pay for our travel. Like, we're getting paid on top of it. Like, we have such blessed lives. So it's so cool to, like, connect with those girls because they're the reasons why we're getting paid. You know, they're the ones that are saying, look, we can do this too. Yeah, I, it kind of gives me chills, really, like, the history of it all. Like, it's, it's really amazing, like, and... Yeah, we talked about it the other day, actually. But, because she talked about Tara, and I was like, Stina was like that for me. So, I grew up having her as my big idol. I think Stina has done a lot in women's riding. If you would have the perfect person, it would be, like, Barbie doll. Thing. like she would be like the Barbie of snowboarding, just having the perfect career and doing really well and staying in it. So, Stina definitely made it look like it was allowed to be a girl, still riding, still rocking. I started snowboarding in uh, 1990 and back then I think I was pretty much the only girl snowboarding in my home resort. I think back then all the girls kind of dressed like guys and they were really, you know, it was quite different and the girls were not really allowed to be seen as girls at all. And I think a couple of years later, I got sponsored. I got hooked up with Prom from US, which was the first brand that actually made snowboard clothes for girls. It was Tina Bastich and Shannon Dunn. They made their own line. 
And this was really new because before that all the girls were just wearing kind of men's clothes for snowboard. I mean, I think women specific brands probably made it more mainstream even, you know, because girls who didn't grow up skateboarding or surfing and like board sports weren't their lifestyle, but their boyfriend shredded. You know, like those girls, most, most of them want to look cute on the hill. So I think that when women specific brands came in, it made it more inviting to girls who wanted to look cute while they're shredding. And I have nothing wrong with that, but I just, you know, I just wanted to snowboard. I think it helped for girls to feel like they had a place in the sport and they were really part of it, not just trying to be part of something that the guys did. That was good and the money came more into it and it made it possible for girls to actually do their sport and they could make some money on it. Um, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, there wasn't a market for girls. Uh, there was very few girls that were in the limelight um, back then, like Carabeth Burnside and Jana Mayan was because she got she turned pro and um, was getting blown up by Volcom at a really young age, at like 14 I think she might have been. Honestly, I don't think uh, the winnings for contests got really big until X Games came along, you know? like That was like the first event I remember prize money got considerably larger. It went from a grand, two grand, 3,500 to all of a sudden it seemed like it was double digits, you know, so. Getting something like four to five grand was, you know, three to five grand was really significant. Back then you could, um, you could pretty much live off your season on, <laughs> on winning one contest. Yeah, I think the TTR World Tour is, uh, I mean, spearheading women's snowboarding, you know, like really laying down a foundation and putting us like on a podium where we can really show what we have and by get, giving us equal prize money. And I mean, definitely keeps girls motivated, you know, and they want to ride well at those events and they want to do well for overall. And I think it's, I mean, it's just one of those things that it's going to keep people motivated and hungry, so it's good. So yeah, getting to check like, 10, 15 grand was amazing, and now here we're looking at, you know, overalls getting 50 to 100 thousand dollars, and and snowboarders making a, a very significant living off doing what they do. Riders today can earn in excess of half a million dollars through sponsorship endorsements, prize money, magazine photo shoots, pro model accessories, boards, boots, and bindings. This was largely made possible by the image and athleticism of the early professional female snowboarders, such as Tara Dikitas. Pioneering women's snowboarding, Tara was recognized for her skill by mainstream media, and in 2004, FHM recognized the women of action sports. Things are going to grow and you can't stop them, so it didn't hurt snowboarding. Snowboarding was going to go that route anyway. You know, whether Tara decided to get on the cover of a magazine, it would have been somebody else, so. Yeah, I got recognized before I got naked. <laughs> With the newfound mainstream awareness, Tara continued as a pioneer and was invited to join The Tonight Show with David Letterman. And then with that also, I ended up going on Howard Stern and Carson Daly and all these places where, at the time, very few, if any, snowboarders had been guests on the show. So I found myself getting thrown into this mainstream media and um, it was really interesting. I mean, I embraced every moment of it. It was, it was such an amazing journey, but um, yeah, it was, it was a trip for sure. <laughs> While Tara Dikitas and Jenna Mayen were pushing the progression and awareness of freestyle snowboarding, Canada's Victoria Jalous was pioneering in changing the perception of women's big mountain free ride. Yeah, uh, Victoria is awesome. She's always been someone that I freaking look up to for sure. Like, you know. Contests have never been my number one thing like that I die to do by any means. And if I could swap places and be riding big mountains like that, I'd do it in a second. Like, I don't know, she's got bigger balls than most dudes, I think. I watch her freaking ride those lines and I seriously get goosebumps sitting on the couch. I can't even imagine that perspective. So I got nothing but respect for all those girls that are up there charging those mountains. 